He had his gun, so he just swung it open. I started to notice that, you know, the atmosphere feels a little bit weird. First thing he seen was this six and a half foot tall, broad shoulder, dark hair, that freaked him out. We hadn't talked to her about like life and death and what any of that means. She's three years old, you know. So we turned around. Suddenly there's a whole tree falling across the road. And she was describing to us that, you know, there was a deceased person uh, that she could see, she could see visually. You're listening to Cryptid Clues, where we tackle the ever-expanding history and mystery of monsters and supernatural madness every Monday and Friday. You can find us at cryptidclues.ca for more information, or even check out exclusive content such as interviews and D&D campaigns at patreon.com slash cryptidclues. Welcome to Cryptid Clues, everybody. I'm your host, who's watched the most, Ruben Olson, joined by the man who skipped his raisin bran this morning, Taylor Field. Today's episode is a special watch along. You should check out our links for over on cryptidclues.ca blog or the episode's description. We'll help you time it out for some commentary as we check out the numerous clips that made us believe in Bigfoot. First up, is our 20-second shilling moment where I tell you to go ask us questions over at our email, cryptidclues at gmail.com. Check out our website, which I already mentioned, and if you like what you hear, join our Patreon for a dollar or more for ad-free exclusive content and D&D episodes at patreon.com slash cryptidclues. Finally, find us on almost all social media. If you support us, we can include less ad breaks over time. But, you know, Taylor, I kind of wanted to call out the rating we got showing us our opportunities with ad breaks. Should we do two ads or one ad this episode and give our listeners a break? Well, let's see how light our wallets are feeling. Wow, what a <laughs> capitalist comment. All right, so moving on, Taylor, I believe you have some videos prepped for our listeners to follow along with in the episode description and for us to watch and commentate on together. Yes, so you said it. Oh, by, by the way, great intro. Like You just roll that off, those plugs, fantastically. Super, super oh, smooth. Better than last time where I was like... No, oh, the time before last time I was a little bit sick and you could hear it in my voice in the intro. Oh, yes, I recall that. <laughs> Not anymore, though. You nailed that. But you're right. We got some videos we're going to be diving into. And uh, <clears throat> this is going to be a lot of fun because we're just kind of going to go through frame by frame. And the links to the specific five videos we'll be covering will be in the description down below. Uh, but we're going to start off with our first video, and this is one I remember you you showed me all of these, but I remember this one very specifically because this one was absolutely terrifying to actually see it because it just you, your brain can't really process what you're seeing. So we're going to break down and just kind of go in and nitpick the videos, maybe be a little bit of a devil's advocate or a little bit of justification into the evidence and just kind of hone in and speak to the videos. Are we trying to get like, Hey, this is real. This is a hoax. I don't think we're going to really, you know, prove anything. We're just going to talk about it. I think we're going to look at it, share our thoughts and also give our listeners some kind of timing ritual to follow so that they can watch it with us if they so desire. So the first link in the episode description is going to be Buffalo at Yellowstone National Park. And this is some amazing footage. Taylor, I showed you this one in here. It's being streamed. It's a camera that everybody can control on the live stream of Yellowstone National Park. And at one point, it zooms in a little bit and you can see some really tall folk in the background walking down towards some bison. So, Taylor, if you want to back up the video for us just to zero seconds here, we'll give our listeners a heads up to start it if they so desire. They can also check it out and then listen to us talk about it. Whatever works. It's uh, 3 minutes and 26 seconds. Let's talk over it as much as we can. And we're going to start when I say 1. So, 3, 2, 1. Look at that. Look at that opening. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Mary Greeley News. Okay, there's some bison. So the the fun thing about this video is you really don't see it unless you look for it. And because it's part of a live stream too, it, it's so believable to me that this is some good evidence for the existence of Bigfoot. So if you zoom in on the corners, the little open spot that's above the two bison and there's some smoke piling up, 
you'll see about four figures walk across. One of them has a little bit of a hobble, and this is according to another YouTuber, Thinker Thunker, who did a really good in-depth analysis of this video. And after they pass through that little strip of land above the smoke, you'll see them come down as well. And if you watch the video from the beginning after seeing these guys walk, you can actually go back the first few frames before the smoke hits the left and you can see them starting to enter the camera frame on the left side as well. But these people are absolutely huge. Those are more than likely adult buffalo. I almost call them bison. I think they're the same thing. They Sorry, it's getting on when I start to see them. Yeah, yeah. But as they walk along and you look at the size comparison, they're in the distance. They're probably 60, 100 feet away at the very last frame that you see them. And they're taller than the buffalo are. So it really proves, uh, yeah, yeah. You can you can just see them there at one minute thirty three seconds. Taylor's pause the video here. Right to there. yeah, center buffalo dead center. If you look up at that level of snow right above that first tree line to the right, you can see movement. And if you want to see a breakdown that's slowed down, zoomed in, and has them like highlighted and shown, yes, they are there. Not Paradelia. Thinker Thunker zooms in on them. You can watch them walk. They move their legs. They are very clearly figures walking through the snow. It's hard to see on the zoomed out original recording of the live stream, but that's what we're watching because we want to watch the original clips. And that just amazes me. Like this is in Yellowstone National Park. If you're out here walking near these buffalo, you're going to get in trouble. And this is a huge area too. These things got to eat. So if they're hunting, maybe they're walking down here to try and grab one of these. There's that one that has that hobble. It kind of shows that, you know, somebody's up here in these conditions the last thing they're going to do is walk past a herd of buffalo you're going to go get help these aren't people these aren't human beings these are either really really tall giant basketball players playing a prank or you know sasquatches at which point mm -hmm. this is probably some really good evidence for it if you go off based off measurements and everything like that I'm trying to find another moment here to pause where they kind of enter the frame. I'm using my peripheral vision here. We've gone past the part where they pass through the uh, pine trees there. They're going to pass through the, the front here. And the surprising thing about this footage as well is as soon as they enter clear view of the live stream camera, the feed cuts away. As if somebody was watching that live stream, somebody saw it and they thought, oh, whoops, cut to a different camera, cut to whatever and then you lose the footage. Or somebody that was in control of the camera, as this is something that can be publicly viewed, uh, it's 2.55 that they enter a clear shot in between the two buffalo again. Between a couple of trees, you can see them walking through. Um, it's funny that you mentioned that because when the feed does get cut, <clears throat> this footage was recorded uh, and saved due to the fact that the buffalo were arriving at old, the old faithful geyser. And I believe it was weeks later when, after it was published, that this is when people started to realize that, hey, what are those things back there? Again, you're right. The feed was cut. And I'm assuming they hope no one would notice it because watching this, uh, if we didn't know what we were looking for, we easily would have missed it for sure. Oh, exactly. Could have been lost for sure. And, and again, the big thing to look for is the measurement of these things. If you were to take a screenshot of this, you cut them out in Photoshop or Paint or whatever, and you just move that box down next to a buffalo, a buffalo stands six feet tall at the shoulder. That is pretty tall. These things are taller than the buffalo are, which really clearly shows you that th these aren't people walking through those trees, but they're clearly upright beings that are just waltzing through. Yeah. It's not the clearest footage in the world. This is super duper blurry, but the measurements are there. The clear two feet walking through the snow thing is there like these are huge yeah and i mean when you look from where the buffalo are standing and you backtrack uh <laughs> as best you can look at the distance between where this thing's walking and the buffalo is walking you can see okay well like how many feet would you say that is 
I, I I'm estimated 60 to 100 feet and I'm terrible okay. at measurements like that. That's that's what I was kind of assuming too. So when then you take that and you could do this in paint or Photoshop, you can cut that guy out in the background and drag him right next to the bison. And without the, zooming him in properly for perspective too. This is him 100 feet away and he's taller than the six foot buffalo are. And there's more behind him that come up. There's four of these things total walking through. Mm -hmm. And if this was a prank, why would they take monkey suits or whatever up to Yellowstone National Park, would they know exactly where this live camera feed is? Are they walking through there for something else? I highly doubt it's people hiking through the snow up there. Like, this is a dangerous spot to be in. Which is why, to me, this is this is a really good piece of evidence. It is. And you keep saying people hiking in the snow. I, I've never met anyone that has really explored... Uh, Yellowstone National Park in the thick of winter. I mean, it's just, it looks absolutely like horrible hiking conditions right now. <laughs> um, you've got the geezers, you've got the geysers, you've got the buffalo. There's a lot going on. There is, there certainly is. But, I mean, yeah, we've talked to the size component to this, but just an individual being out here doing this, like, people are loud. People are very loud. And these people here, whatever they are, they're walking single file and they're moving exceptionally well in the snow. When you look at how people move in snow, like you, it's, it's, this movement's very different compared to a human being. And that being, again, what I was saying, people being loud, bison would easily pick up on that. But the stealth factor, these things are completely oblivious to a group of bipedal creatures creeping in up behind them. Yeah. Uh, and you brought up the, the speed too. the distance. These things travel in under 20 seconds. They travel hundreds of feet in 20 seconds. And one of them has a hobbled leg as well. And there it is. The camera zooms out at the very end. Taylor just unpaused it from 255, 320. The videos ended. The camera zooms way out. This was a high, high quality camera that zoomed really far into the mountain. How fascinating would it be to have a landscape like that in camera view and be able to zoom in that far all the time. Oh, well, it'd be amazing. You wouldn't have to go into the woods. Clearly we didn't have to here because we got incredible footage of something that shouldn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> and what are the odds too of that? If this was a hoax, what are the odds of this person zooming that far in and finding a group of these four people hiking through right here? I mean, if you have motion sensors, if you've staged it, if you have designated areas where the bison like to hang out and you plan it accordingly, then sure, it's definitely a plausible factor that could it could be a hoax, but there's too and, many other unknown uh, components. And, and who are they hoaxing here too? I mean, this was never really made like public, oh, video of Bigfoot found kind of a deal. This is just the Bigfoot niche community that deep dives into videos like these, analyzes them. Again, I'll bring up the YouTuber Thinker Thunker. There's been a few other YouTubers that have looked at this as well. Why, why hoax them? Why hoax five or six people? Like, come on. I said, I, meant, I said hoax. I meant to say hoax. Well, another thing too. Now, when we see the uh, the one Bigfoot, or assuming Bigfoot, moving in through the leading or leading of the pack here, um, after it comes out into the open, the others are no longer behind it. Yeah, they, they hang behind by the tree there. Behind this tree, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's you have to thought. look between the gap to see the other four come into view here. Oops, let me go. Yeah, because we, uh, yeah, there they are. You can see them sauntering through. You counted four? Yeah, okay, there's one, two, three, four, four big guys. And the bison are just oblivious. Yeah. Yeah, and there goes the wobbler one. It's amazing how they just, these things don't know. Absolutely so that, amazing, too, when you look at the landscape when it pulls back, too. That camera zooms in so far. When it zooms out, you look at that and you go, wow, these are human beings out there. They have a long way to go to get that hobbler to safety. Yes, absolutely. That zoom out, now was that... Uh, also, I imagine another deterrent, like, oh my God, we got something here. Let's zoom out. <laughs> you know, let's uh, let's stop this from uh, focusing on the other three that are hidden behind that tree. Yeah, and I believe if you check out um, this YouTuber here, Mary Greeley News, it's just a random person. They don't have any other Bigfoot-centric videos or anything like that. They just posted a little recording of a live stream. 
Yeah. That's all it is. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. Absolutely spectacular footage. Uh, that's probably one of my highest rated ones up there with up there with Patty. And not because of the quality of the video, but because of the logistics behind it. The factors that make this believable, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just such a subtle little thing. It's not, it doesn't need to be anything more than that. <laughs> and I don't think we pulled up uh, footage for this show today, but the IMAX footage of Bigfoot is a hot topic one too, where it's either a crew member or it's a Bigfoot that was just randomly in frame during a national nature documentary. Uh, that's I another one that's similar to this that. that to me is fairly believable too. That one, I remember, I remember seeing that and it was, it was, mind-blowing how subtle it was like you you notice it as a viewer but i remember reading into it and then talking about like oh my god like what is that in the frame holy crap like were you out there no (laughs) exactly and now another fun thing about this too if you think about it how much footage do we have right now that's not bigfoot footage but has sasquatches in it there's cameras everywhere like it's probably a very very prominent reoccurring thing with having so much footage archived and bigfoot being in the background just kind of (laughs) photobombing especially photos and i don't just mean people touristing on a mountainside or way off in the background but planes flying over heck could even be google driving around just getting all these photos and agencies as well we're documenting everything and it's just a matter of time before something like this happens where national you know, Yellowstone National Park gets something on camera. And while it's tried tried to be hidden and buried away, it's thankfully um, not salivated, but... Um, salivated? <laughs> salivated. No, not that word. It's... Um, Salvaged? Thank you. That's the one. It's salvaged due to the amazing awareness and perception of certain individuals that are, you know, they're watching this video because they want to see Buffalo. Like, oh my God, there's some bipedal figures walking around in the background. Otherwise people would have missed it. And it also takes a very special mind to look at these videos too and think that's a Bigfoot. Because think of the majority of people that would see those people. They go, oh, there's just somebody walking up there. Exactly. Exactly. And that's where another door could be shut and this could be, you know, swept away and no one looks or bats an eye again at it. But because someone had that open mind and initially thought that it could be a Bigfoot and then that just spreads like crazy for like wildfire and then it hits the communities and the different other people out there that are looking into this thing and then boom it makes its way to us <laughs> <laughs> well exactly honestly this is before I move on to the next one this is again one of my favorites this is the kind of video with the statistics the logistics or measurements all that stuff that's behind it I would use this as like an introductory video to show people and be like, oh, this is why Bigfoot's real. Mm -hmm. This is why I believe in Bigfoot. I can show people the patty footage and they can go, oh, that's just a person in a suit. And they don't give you a chance to dive into the muscle movement and stuff like that. But you show somebody this and you tell them right away how tall a buffalo is and you show them that side by side. What what are four of the tallest people in the world doing out there? Exactly. You're not left with a lot of options. Oh, you're not at all. The fact that you can also add the like a, a little bit of a national credibility to it, where this is a oh, you know a prominently used uh, live cam service, uh, like like we're filming. It's not just someone like set up with a camera and then boom, it's right in front of them. Yep, and it's in a very famous spot too. It's the old Faithful Geezer. Mm-hmm. Geyser. Geyser. <laughs> I said geezer earlier, and that really threw me off. You did. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, I think we're ready to move on to our next video here. Yeah, we're going to open up number two. Now this one. Oh, I love this video. This is the Independence Day footage. So this is going to be link number two in the episode description. It's a minute and 53 seconds. Taylor, when you're ready to play this video, I'm going to do my three, two, one. We're going to go on one. In case anybody wants to time it with us, you don't have to. You can watch it and listen to us afterwards and just guess where we are. Taylor's silent, so I'm going to go three, two, one. Now, this is some fascinating footage because of all the different Bigfoot videos and stuff, you usually catch them from behind or whatever. This one is another one of those classic paddy walks, turns and looks at the camera, but plot twist, stops behind a boulder, 
to pick something up. And when it comes back into frame, now if you zoom in and you analyze this footage, if you zoom back into this video after it ducks behind the rock, it comes out of it holding a smaller baby Bigfoot over its shoulder. And now that's a pretty elaborate costume to have to wear, right? But if you look at this, you watch people who have examined it, you will see that that baby Bigfoot also moves its head. And there is some movement on the facial expression of the Bigfoot as well. As blurry as it is, can't discredit video quality contributing to that. This is just absolutely amazing. Taylor's paused it at 41 seconds here. Yeah. It shows a Bigfoot standing up behind a rock and it's got another little head bopped up in front of it, just like a human would pick up and carry a baby in front of them. Scoop them up under the legs and support their back and hold them up right on your chest. Absolutely crazy. And it's got some dark black fur too, like hair, I guess, not fur. Mm -hmm. It's very, very prominently different from its background environment. I was going to say, and this is me playing the devil's advocate, uh, for this, because I remember when you showed me this, and this was definitely freaky. But what are the odds of this being someone in a suit? Because we can't properly gauge their height in this video. That's one of the things. Could it be someone wearing a suit? And then, in the case of the infant, they go behind the rock and then they spend time like putting their arm up uh, like a puppet or something like that, and then using this as that there being their arm. Absolutely plausible. Now, again, how many people are you going to hoax with this video? It didn't go over very well. This isn't a super popular Bigfoot video. But let's play the rest of it here, and we'll come back to that question after. So you see that one arm support the baby again on the back? Yeah. That's the other arm, and there's the other arm wrapped around it, so it's not a puppet. And you can see as it walked by there at around 50 seconds, you got a little bit of a shot of the leg as it walked by. So now the video at one minute zooms in and really focuses on the subject here. This is where we're going to get a clearer look at the subject. You can see the arm swinging, walking by. Same build as the Patterson Gimlin suit. Or Bigfoot. I guess I was accidentally playing devil's advocate there because you mentioned suits last. Here it is picking up the baby. Right? Baby moves. See the baby move back. It's clearly supporting its head. It bobs a little bit. And there she is walking. And you can see those careful steps. Looks at the camera because it's like frightened or whatever. It just wants to get out of there. The baby's there. It's a threat, right? And now you can see the steps. That analysis right there is probably the easiest way to tell if that was a suit or not, is looking at the step. Uh, one thing, if this is a suit, is the slight disconnect between the head and the shoulders. As most Sasquatch videos show that they don't have much of a neck and this one doesn't have much of one either it does turn a little bit to look to the side but it can't turn its head all the way much like patty does and you can see that foot come up and it kicks up at like a 45 degree angle there which is very hard to do this kind of maneuvering if you're in a suit out in the woods like that so that's a pretty amazing suit if somebody made it that's a lot of money to spend for a hoax could it be done absolutely this is not the same timeline as the Patterson-Gimlin film where Hollywood budgets and everything couldn't even make a suit as good as Patty. This is a lot closer to our time here. This is someone that may have had enough money to make a suit, I suppose, if they were rich. And with that amount of money, if you're going to hoax Bigfoot, I guess you wouldn't really want to use a clear camera, but I don't think we had HD video at this time. It's kind of an enigma, honestly. Mm hmm. I mean, you've made so many good points. And while I was playing the devil's advocate card earlier, if it is a fake, it's got a lot of minute little details that are in here. Like when that head just now, it kind of like, you know, it's supporting itself. It kind of like moves back. Like it just seems like it's its own being there. Yeah. And if it's got matted hair and stuff like that, that could explain that disconnect between the head and the shoulders. It's got that big square-shaped butt, kind of like Patty does. But again, that's another point people like to bring up is, oh, is that a suit? It's got that bit of a disconnect there. Yeah. It's, uh, pardon me, it's very 
gosh, when it starts walking to at the very beginning here, like just looking at it, God, it shit freaks me out because it's so um, a little bit further back here. It's just very alarmed. You know what it's alarmed at? This upcoming what? ad break. Welcome back, everybody. Oh, that was a mean one. I apologize. <laughs> no, that wasn't too bad. Um, but yeah, so when it's just uh, like sauntering off here and it's trying to go get its infant, I'm assuming now, okay, somehow this guy managed to creep in and sneak up to this family without her knowing. And now she knows. And so she's going off to get her young. But that's the convincing thing for me is because if, if it was a suit... Uh, you know, when you put on a costume, you put the mask on the headpiece and you can turn. But when you turn, it's going to be that disconnect from the body, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But when you look at this as blurry as it is, you can still somewhat, maybe it's better if I go to this part here, you can still somewhat see We're that We're at a minute not, 46 right now. Yeah, they kind of slow mold the video here and play it in reverse. It kind of, uh, it seems a little bit more like it's the body too that's moving with it. Cause I'm trying to look for like not muscle movements necessarily. Cause again, it's blurry, but it's in some dark shadows here too. So it is hard to see that now right yeah. there. If you pause it at 140, 142, 144, you can see the light glistening off of the hair. Now synthetic hair on a suit doesn't glisten quite like that. It's very blurry. So I'm, I could be wrong on this but it has some pretty hard shine. And that is something that really just indicates hair. Interesting. Yeah, you're right. And that face, that is the closest I have seen video of that looks just like Patty. Mm hmm. Cause there's some pretty good close ups of that face, but you're absolutely right. And again, it's in the movements. When she picks up the child and she walks off and you can see the lower part, like yeah, that's really first supporting step. that kid. Exactly. That first step. It's so very much like Patty, just how it moves. <laughs> the amount of support that it gives its baby too. I mean, let's say this is a couple of teens. Have they held a baby a lot? Do they know how to support a kid? When my son was born, I held him like a new parent. I didn't know what I was doing. Now I pick up my child with confidence. I know how to hold kids. I know how to support them. There is a, there's a very, very large difference between people that can and can't hold a kid. And mm -hmm. this Bigfoot here is supporting its young with the kind of hold and maneuvering that you would do for a real child. So unless there was a child involved in the hoax also wearing a suit, which would make this even more expensive and crazy, you can really see, like you can see the arm hanging around uh, the mom or the dad there. See its leg dangling down a little bit, but it's got that support. It like lifts up its leg and it holds against the hip of the, the parent. Yeah. Again here, this That this arm makes, grab too. That arm grab, yeah, because it's very much like, yeah, we got to go. <laughs> like, because you can see the infant almost like it's trying to react or do something because this is when it starts to get animated and move around. But yeah, she just grabs them. It's like, okay, we're out. Mm-hmm. Taylor, for your sake, I apologize. All the lights are off in my suite right now. You can't even see me at this I was point. Gonna say you, you're, you're it got looking, pretty dark. You're looking very, very uh, in the basement over there. Well, I'm I'm not in the basement. Though. I'm in the addition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I have much else to add. Just this is this is pretty incredible footage. Actually, one more question: Do you know where this footage was recorded? Um, Independence Day, July Fourth. That's all I know about it. Check That's the video all. description here and we'll see if it has anything. Uh, crossing. No, nothing. Melba Ketchum. I don't know if that. Dr. That's Ketchum. Uh, Melba oh, Ketchum. Oh, tags. A, yeah, it's a tag for the Melba Ketchum project. Right. Hmm. Yeah. I don't see anything about the location. Interesting. Oh, well. Absolutely amazing video, though. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm ready to move on to our next video. I would still hold the Buffalo video in higher regard as far as evidence goes. I would too. I can't sure. I can't pull that one aside and say that's definitely a hoax. This one this one could possibly be very unlikely, but it's you know, it's good if you watch the Patty film and you believe in Bigfoot already and then you watch this, you can look for some of those minute things. 
It's like a, a DLC added on to the patty for footage. <laughs> this is the expansion pass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. The Bigfoot well, Battle Pass. Ooh, that sounds great. All right. So <laughs> next up on the list, we have the Marble Mountain Bigfoot video. This is a creepy one. It's a long one as well. It's six minutes and 57 seconds. I feel like we might skim through this one, folks. So I apologize. It's going to be a little bit harder to watch along with us for the first few minutes. Although for the last couple of videos, Taylor's been scrubbing back and forth and pausing. So <laughs> I'm you're not going to stay in sync with us too long. <laughs> I still think it's important if you haven't watched these. Feel free to open up link three. Check out the Marble Mountain footage. This is an interesting one. It's got a little silhouette in the mountaintop that's just angry, angry at a group of people. This was one of the first Bigfoot videos as well that I had watched. So really, I imagine you want to hit play here. Do you want me to do my countdown? Yeah, do the countdown. All right. Three, two, and one. A strange encounter in the Marble Mountains. Ooh. So... To speak a little bit to this, um, <clears throat> the Marble Mountains is the northwestern California mountain range, and this footage was recorded in June 2001 by Jim Mills. He was the leader of a youth group called Campus Life, and they were basically on their annual backpacking trip in the Marble Mountains. And looking into what other people were saying about uh, There's a Mr. nice Mills, nest right there at the beginning of the video. It kind of looks like it, yeah, that it's crawling in now. Mr. Mills was a very, very down-to-earth, humble, honest, hardworking individual. So to kind of just kind of have this outburst of something that could be a hoax, maybe it's real, it just was out of character. And so there are a lot of people that are inclined to believe him when he came forward with this. I think what really started him recording this video, too, is the gigantic nest that they found. It's like a big teepee made of pine trees, sticks, they crawl inside of it, they giggle and laugh, and this is going to be why they find some marks on some trees here, some scratches. This is going to be why that shadowy figure on the mountainside is so angry, because they're they're clearly intruding its home. This is where it probably goes to sleep. He looks right inside the, um, the nest here. I'm going to keep calling it that, because we don't really know what it is. It's just like a little lean-to shelter, pine tree, stick mass. It's got some logs in there. It does look like some of the logs are pushed if there are pine trees that are there standing there, leaned over to support this, all the sticks and logs are twisted in. A group of guys could make that. If they wanted to hoax this, they could have thrown this together. Yeah. Looks like he's recording with like a VHS camera, though. Well, yeah, and it looks like he's recording not because of the, now his, that, his... That right there, they show this. What timestamp is that, Taylor? That was at about the That was two, at a minute 50 minute. second mark. You can see... The bottoms of these trees are splintered and twisted off. It's not cut with an axe. No. And that's why, too, that's credibility to why he's recording. Because it's he's not recording it in a manner that his his mates here are. Have this is where they it. see something on the hill. Exactly. They do. It's like the opening line to uh, Finding Bigfoot. There's something on the hill. <laughs> now, they're looking way up the mountain. Like, this is way up there. If this was a hoax, they'd have to send somebody way up into deep, dangerous territory. You could get attacked by bears. You could get attacked by cougars. Just to record some guy walking down the mountain. So they're going to zoom in. This is really hard to see here. When they get a clear shot of it, it's completely silhouette against the skyline. Walking down the mountainside, really tall, prominent figure. And it is... It starts to walk fairly normal, waving its arms, and it hears them and just starts freaking out. It gets angry. You can see it trekking down fairly quickly, too. Like, look at the legs on this thing as it marches down a very steep hill. This is very reminiscent of the buffalo footage, I would say, in the sense, like, just the, the posture, I guess. It's blurry, but it just... The speed at which it's moving, and it is taking small, careful steps. Mm -hmm. But it's covering a lot of ground with those very small steps. And they've zoomed in quite a bit here, but you can see the length of its arms. You can see how long that figure is. Now, I'm not going to discredit that this couldn't just be a tall person wearing a hoodie or something. It does kind of look like a person wearing just a black, dark clothes, which would be very hot and sweaty up there. I suppose there is some snow. It could be a chilly day. But yeah, no, at, while they're recording this, this thing keeps walking down the mountain and they kind of just decide to get out of there. They're like, oh, nope, this guy's coming for us. He's super angry. Who is this dude? 
what would you do, Taylor, if you were in this situation? You found a nest, you're recording stuff. Maybe you're there with me. Maybe a couple other guys here. It's just shaking a tree there. It's angry. It's, puffing and it's, puffing. It's the goosebumps that set in when you see the figure at around four minutes, 13 seconds, when you can see both its legs and it turns to face them. And it's just like huffing and like swinging its arms because you you feel threatened in this situation. I and feel it, threatened it, just watching it. It knows it's far away too, but it also knows that someone's there at its home. Yeah. It gets mad. You know it's going to come for you too. Like this is the moment where if you're out in the woods alone and you're very far away from anything, even as far away as this Bigfoot is, you feel like there's no escape. You really don't. They only have safety in numbers here because there's so many kids with them. That's true. Um, <laughs> it's... It's kind of like a child throwing a tantrum almost because, yeah, it knows like, OK, there's not just one, two, three people here, but there's so many people down there ah, just huffing and puffing and it's continuing on. I like that it kind of it looked like it expedited to get to the tree line and it was just kind of causing a ruckus. But now it's continually going down the hill still, but it's definitely on a downward descent towards them for sure. And it, when you look at its posture, very, very different from a person's posture he kind of looks like he's relaxed on the couch leaning back he's having a good old time but he's walking at the same time yeah i paused at five minutes 28 seconds and you can just you can really just see it some of that is video distortion the legs oh, are turning into a little peak there but yeah that is quite the silhouette you can see that disconnect I said earlier that if it was somebody, it was somebody wearing a hoodie because there is no neck. It connects perfectly to the top of the head. Mm -hmm. Even with the video distortion, you see how thin the wrists and the legs are? The neck area should be like that too if it's somebody with a neck. But it's not. It's just one lump right up to the head. Yeah. It wouldn't make sense to me why someone again would be there just doing this freaking out and if it was a person they'd be smaller it's that's just how it is <laughs> and knowing what we know with bigfoot research and stuff and family groups do you think there's more in this video that we're we're just completely unaware of do you think there's more bigfoot if this is indeed a sasquatch video well it sorry i'm just baffled just by six minutes 14 seconds it's just doing some weird things if there was more, that could make sense why he's getting so angry or she could be getting so angry because it's a nest. That was a big home that it looked like they, they invaded. So maybe there's a few of them. Maybe it's calling out saying, hey, there's people down there. You know, stay away. <laughs> Something like that. Now, as they look at the landscape here at the very end, this is way out there. There's nothing. There's just nature, trees. That's it. Yeah. And so this was the first footage that you came across. This is one of the very first pieces of footage I found way back when I was a teenager. I remember scrolling online. I thought, you know what? I always like Bigfoot and Ocopoco and stuff. But I've got to look up and see what, what, what there is of it now. Like, where, where's Bigfoot now kind of a deal? I remembered seeing the Patterson Gimlin footage. I looked up more Bigfoot evidence and I found a Facebook site, Facebook Find Bigfoot. Uh, the guy's okay. He was a distinct believer. Everything, absolutely every video he posted, he thought was evidence from what I could see. He did a little bit of measurements and stuff like that. Nowhere near in depth as some other YouTubers do. But this was the very first one on the list that I saw on his page. It was the Marble Mountain footage. It was a breakdown of him watching it. And I was fascinated, the fact that somebody took the time and effort to make a breakdown of this, to, to look at this and say, well, this is why it's a Bigfoot. And then I went down the list and I started watching more and more videos, and not all of these were out at the time, but something like the, the Independence Day footage was there as well. I saw this as well, same day I watched the Marble Mountain footage. It's crazy stuff. Yeah, it really, really is. The movements just terrify me. They really, really do. <laughs> you, you brought up movement several times here, Taylor. I, I feel like you're shaking in your boots. I am. I really, really am. Just every time I see it stop and it just, it steps backwards. Like here at four minutes, 20 seconds, steps backwards and it starts just freaking out, doing its stuff. Like the, like the tantrum thing I was saying. It's a child. It sees that these people are in its home and it's freaking out like a kid that can't play with a toy. 
Do you have any other thoughts to add before we move on to the next one? I don't think so. Just that uh, I've saw some people that were focused on disproving this footage and they were comparing this with other shots of the footage and showing that its size is actually a lot smaller than what we think. But, well, it's definitely not a scientific... um, not scientific. It's not an exact science to actually like scale and measure accordingly by doing that kind of stuff. Like it does yield some kind of results, but at the end of the day, looking at this and how far away they are, we can distinctively see, okay, this thing is big. It's well, it's also tall. assuming that it's an adult too. Who knows? This could be a teenager Bigfoot. It Absolutely. could be five feet tall. Mm-hmm. And if it is a teenager, I mean, a young one would definitely have others around to answer your previous question. Yeah. No, absolutely. But, uh, yeah, that does it for that one. The Marble Mountain Bigfoot. Um, Moving on, we are going to open up. I think I saw a skunk ape. Please help. The most sincere video title. No <laughs> it's two minutes, 16 seconds. This one's also absolutely amazing. I know I keep saying that word, but that's because we handpicked these videos. These are some of my favorites. This one is a little bit freaky. When I saw this one, this was uh, quite a bit later. I think this is a newer video. And this one startled me. This one kind of gave me the spooks. This one, funnily enough, I saw was making the rounds again on social media. And again, I don't believe it's... Let me just get a timestamp here. It's not a superbly recent video. Yeah, so about nine years ago. But... uh, (laughs) <laughs> I saw it, like I said, it was making the rounds and people were talking about it on the news and stuff like that. So, Yeah, that's the thing about a lot of these Bigfoot videos is they come back, people steal them too and go, wow, this piece of Bigfoot evidence was so great. Why don't I use this to like hoax a recent one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're going to start this one here in three, two, one. Started out a little bit slow there. He's moving through the woods and all the foliage. Now this guy, the recorder here, snuck up on something and he thought it was maybe a bear or something at first and you can see it in the first few seconds between some trees it's actually in a swamp as you'll see later in the footage and it looks like it's ripping wood out of the tree that it's at and it makes a nice little splash as it rips out the stick here throws it aside and right here when he stands up you can see that that's not a bear it had an arm it was pulling at something and it threw it aside that's just absolutely terrifying this guy's mm-hmm. scared like his camera's shaky he's breathing heavily through the footage this thing's moving and the light's hitting it in such a way too that, that if it's a guy in a suit again weird location to go do this in i suppose there could be a highway or something nearby but there's a lot of movement involved here there's a lot of fine little details as it kind of wiggles its body moves around picks up the bark but it's the end that gets me the most. When he looks at this thing for too long, he makes a sound and it's going to stand up. And mm-hmm. that part right there, that's what got me. If I was out in the woods alone and I saw something and it stood up, I'd be done. I'd be well, out you, of there. You look at this and you think you think to yourself, oh, it is standing up already. Because you can't really discern where the ground is and where it, where it like how tall it is. In retrospect, now that we know what we know, we th- you can see that it's definitely lower to the ground and kind of crouching a little bit. It could be squatting or something. And it's just tearing into that tree. Like, it's eating, it's mm-hmm. pulling some grubs out or something. You can Which really is another see thing. We, we recently just did an episode on Bigfoot's diet and looking at bugs and stuff here, it's pulling something out of the tree. Mm-hmm. Ah, there it is. Stands Ooh. up right there. And Buddy takes off. That's what frightens him. That's what frightened me. You know, there was that primal fear. He doesn't run very far. He stops. He gathers himself. And then he starts running again. He didn't even need to see its face. He didn't like... (laughs) That's, again, a justification as to being more credible. Because when you look at a a fake video, they try and show the face. They try and show it, like, turn its head a couple times. But yeah, you're right. As soon as he stands up and this guy realizes what he's officially dealing with, he's out. Yeah. I, like, look at the video title. I think I saw a skunk cape. He's still not sure. Yeah. Now, and if that's a hoax, that's a pretty good one, too. Yeah. 
So when you're looking at it, just kind of stand up here, you can really see just the muscles. They just not flex, but just the tension there right before he like freaks out and shifts the camera. But as it stands up, you can see the muscles right in the back, just kind of like, um, I don't know if I would call it flex, but, um, as muscles do when you move up and down, you know, they, you can see them distort and like move around on the body. Right. Yeah, I guess. I mean, the muscle movement's not as clear as it is in something like the Patterson Gimlin film. You can kind of see a little bit of movement there. I, I honestly don't see it as much as I think you do. That could, if it was a suit, it's a good suit. They spent a lot of money just to make a hoax again. It's the movement that really gets me. The, the arm movement, ripping it out, being there in a swamp of all places. That's kind of what makes me think it's a Bigfoot more so than any muscle movement. I, there's one little yank it does earlier in the video too. That's quite telling for me. It's the fine details like that. The yanker pulls that bark off. Yeah, 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 that's it. What do you think it's doing right here at 125? Because it puts both its hands on its head. But it's very peculiar. Well, uh, there's a breakdown of this footage that zooms in, and you can kind of see, look at its back right here, Taylor, at 124. It almost looks like two little legs dangling its back, like it's carrying another little one as a backpack. And oh, it's readjusting no it. no kidding. Yeah. And you can see as it moves its head back into frame, there's also like almost maybe like a little smaller blob or something on the side. So like a younger Bigfoot than the one from Independence Day, but there's like maybe young or something that's just, it's clutching to its back. And it pulls it up and adjusts it. Which if that's a uh, true detail here, if we're not reading into this too deeply, that's crazy. Yeah, that's <laughs> these, these things are caught unaware while they have their young with them, probably distracting them, stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. That footage, uh, it gets me. It gets me really, really good. Absolutely terrifying. My gosh. Mm -hmm. It's always funny reading the comments too. People talking about like, <clears throat> again, this one gentleman here is talking about he's a huge skeptic, but <laughs> this video is one of the most convincing things to him. How many videos do we have left here? We have one more video to dive into. Okay, okay. But before we get into that, we're going to jump to a quick ad break. and We'll be right back. And we're back. So, Oh, you got me with one. I got you there that I was time. totally not expecting that when I could see Taylor <laughs> lift up his arm and point to his watch here. <laughs> well, that was a signal like if you want to go, you could totally go. And I was going to see it. what you do to react here if I didn't oh, do anything. Yeah. <laughs> well, here we are. And I'm looking out for you, video. Mr. Two Star or Mrs. Two Star or Person Two Star reviewer. So this is, for me, the footage that got me. This is uh, the creme de la creme when I was very, very little. Oh, heading internet. into Patterson Gimlin. Exactly. This is when internet was still cooking around when we were young in elementary school and you could barely find YouTube was barely a thing. You just go on internet and be like, hey, Bigfoot. And then this would appear in all its glory. The only footage <laughs> when I was growing up and I was a little kid. The one thing that piqued my interest was this. Again, if you've heard older episodes, you know my very first experience with the Patterson Gimlin film was on one of those little old red binocular things you held up and you could click through the different frames of things. They'd be in like 3D. I, I don't think it was an official one. It could have been like a bootleg or whatever, but it was had Bigfoot, Okopogo, stuff like that in it. Mm -hmm. Not all the pictures. I don't even think all the pictures in that little camera reel were real pictures. I think there was a dinosaur in there, if I remember right. But my memory is getting fuzzy on that, just like blurry Bigfoot videos do. Well, and speaking of the video, we have booted up here the Bigfoot Patterson Gimlin film stabilized. Uh, this is a 10 second clip. The link is down below, so you can click it and you can watch along with us. Again, it's 10 Ooh, seconds. Our shortest video. We're going to probably rewatch this a whole lot here. Oh, We're yeah. not going to watch it for 10 seconds. Now, this was recorded in 1967 before anybody had the money to make a suit with as much detail as this. And it's still, to this day, 2022, cannot be recreated. Hollywood budget in 1967 could do Planet of the Apes, and it was a loose, shaggy little suit. 
And they covered up a lot of that by just having the apes in the film wear clothes. All right, so let's start this video. It's going to take me more than 10 seconds to do the countdown. Holy <laughs> three, two, one. Ah, uh, there she is. I should say, uh, surprise, I put the playback speed at 0.25. <laughs> oh, wow, you really did. Now, there's a step here at, I think it's coming up here at four seconds. Four seconds is a very famous step. That's one of the frames there where she looks at the camera. And if you zoom in on this footage and you look at her right leg as she hits the ground, you will see the thigh fat and the muscle jiggle as she steps down in a very realistic manner, which is one of the biggest proving points to this not being a suit, along with the breasts. One of the detractors is the disconnect from the base of the body there above the hips it kind of looks like it's got some kind of a big diaper on if it was a suit i guess that would be a prominent feature we don't really know bigfoot anatomy very well there's a lot of other things people have pointed out in its shoulder blades the muscle on its back as it walks there's little movements here and there the swaying of the arms the steps the body ratios are way off for a human being to fit in a suit like that you can't have forearm you can't have upper arm extensions, only forearm extensions and Bigfoot's ratios here. She fits her own ratios. They're non-human. It's not something somebody could fit inside without breaking their body. I remember that was one of the earliest points to this. When we first met, actually, and you're speaking to it, you told me about you know, how the forearms work in this, in this situation. Uh, absolutely. I think it's eye-opening to go into this footage knowing that you can't just extend body parts like that. And it's amazing how that goes over people's heads. You play this footage for them, and they totally ignore and disregard those facts. The forearms, like you said, the muscles uh, and the legs there, the thighs. Uh, there's so much to actually explore in this kind of a clip, but people just don the suit on there. And they forget again. Planet of the Apes is around this time. Have We've all seen Planet of the Apes. And exceptionally different uh, compared to this. And you mentioned it too. When you zoom in, you can see all these details. And you can really zoom in and see that the facial details a little bit too there. And it's all proportionately uh, correct, as you said, with the rest of this, this creature. It's also interesting to note that she moves her head to the side while moving her shoulders back. So she can get more of an angle on her look. But when she does move her lack of neck, they're speaking, it's about as much movement as we saw in Independence Day footage. You're right. It can't You're fully right. move its head to the side. Yeah. Again, now, lack there of a neck, same posture too. Some of the detrimental factors to this besides the, the hip line there, uh, the Patterson-Gimlin footage, they, they did have a journal where one of them sketched up a Bigfoot with breasts at one point. So they, they were aware of female Bigfoot. They were looking for one. Fascinating that they found one with breasts as well. But I think that's honestly such a random thing. You're going to find either a male or female Bigfoot if you're looking for one. You're going to record it. It's a good chance it's going to have breasts. The 45 degree, the, the walking angle there, when its foot kicks up, that was probably the first piece of math that I was ever presented with that proved to me that this was more than likely real. Then it turns into the stuff about fitting in the suit. Then it's the body ratios and the forearm extension stuff. There's just too many things in this film that don't add up that make it so hotly debated today. What is it about seeing the feet that uh, convinces you? So it's the way the legs move. If you're, if you're walking, a human being walking cannot walk in a stable fashion where you lift your leg and your lower leg kicks up all the way up in a straight line your feet completely leave the ground heel up in the air like that people don't walk that way naturally people have a hard time walking that way when they're trying to mimic a bigfoot walk yeah that's a good point now another interesting thing too is she is walking in a tightrope fashion as well as is often reported with bigfoot sightings those footprints are all one in front of the other She's taking very large steps. Expedition Bigfoot was able to do a size comparison using LIDAR scanning. They found a piece of the footage 
that's still in that site to this day. And they are able to measure that using LiDAR technology and the scene around them to place Patty as a 3D object in here and also measure her. And she wasn't very tall. I believe she was between five to six feet. So you could say pretty young then. Quite potentially. Interesting. I believe it's either Bob Gimlin's or Thinker Thunker's breakdown where they find that if you zoom in and look at some parts there, she has some signs of a hernia. Interesting. You've also got people that have really dived into this footage and think that they see more than one Bigfoot in it as well. I'm not sure if I believe those ones. The original footage is so... I don't want to say degraded, but shaky and blurry. There could really be anything in the background and you wouldn't be able to tell. Yeah. The stabilized footage is probably the best copy of the footage that you can watch along with breakdowns that show it zoomed in, show the muscle tissue jiggling. We're getting into the realm of AI enhancing now, which is never going to show us the original footage as it was meant to be. It's just going to show up, pretend, oh, this is what it could look like. Mm -hmm. I Absolutely. see a lot of that going around on the internet now too. Yeah. I'm trying to think what else I can add to this because we haven't really talked about the Patterson Gimlin film that much at all on the show. I, I know that Patterson, like, he has unfortunately passed away, and right up until his death, he just planted his feet firmly on the pedestal of this was real. Yeah, and um, Bob Gimlin too is very adamant about the. Uh Bigfoot community and the footage and everything to this day as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I've listened to Gimlin speak on a few different shows. Extremely, extremely nice, nice gentleman. He is so humble and so grounded. Oh my goodness. So that's... He, he never got rich from it. No, not at I think all. There might have been a little bit of money that came in. As would, you know, if you were recording Bigfoot footage and you were trying to prove something exists, you might get a little bit famous for it. I'd also like to note, too, before we get too far into the topic, that when I mentioned a YouTuber by the name of Bob Gimlin earlier, it is not Bob Gimlin from the Patterson Gimlin film. There is another Bob Gimlin out there that's a YouTuber that also wants to prove Bigfoot. The spelling is slightly different. Thank you for the clarification. Um, but you said like he wasn't he wasn't making tons of money off of this. Like At the end of the day, it's... It comes down to, for me, when someone has an experience and you get to know this person and you hear their personality and you hear how they speak, I think that's a huge, another piece of the puzzle to the footage that they may or may not have recorded and just kind of hearing, at least, or even their, their encounter and hearing them talk and really understanding where they come from and seeing in what we've seen today, people finding this nest and just being blown away and focusing with the camera on where the sticks were torn off and then like freaking out like oh my god there's something up on that mountain ridge and then it could be something else as someone just standing in the bush and all of a sudden this thing stands up in the swamp and they just immediately book it and run away there's certain little um components that you can hone in on and just think wow that's such a obscure subtlety why would that be there it's so obscure that it's not something that really would be reenacted or thrown into a scripted hoax, if you ask me. And I mean, as far as hoaxes go, so many people have come forward pretending to be the one in the suit in the Patterson Gimlin film. That has made them more famous than the film made the original videographers. Absolutely. I've seen a few of those because I was just curious what they're saying. And they they get on the news and everything like that and they get so much famous stuff from it they like do. They, their 15 minutes of fame turns into an hour of fame turns into two hours of fame they're still discussed to this day one in particular and his story doesn't line up 100 mm -hmm. but again there's no way to prove it either like there's n there'll never be a way to prove who if who even existed and could have plausibly even been in that suit if it was a suit to begin with so now if bigfoot is proven real if it was to be the forefront of a news piece of media i don't know i can't really find my words right now would you go back and look at this footage with a different set of eyes would you go wow this is like this is history right here this was an antiquated piece of evidence oh absolutely this this would be Probably ground zero. It's it's incredible because when you see things now and we don't know for sure if this is a real thing, if it's 
hoaxed or whatnot, but there's that level of disbelief in it. And I did an episode recently on Ogopogo that had this recent sighting where these people on the Okapo- uh, Okapogo Lake, Okanagan Lake, took a photo of this thing. Okanagan floating. Lake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Okanagan and, uh, Lake. It, it was interesting because you're sitting there, you're looking at this, and well, it could be a million other things or it could be the real thing. And you just sit there in disbelief because when you're presented with the truth, it's you can still have this level of disbelief and resent it and a disconnect almost a disconnect absolutely and i feel like if they confirm and prove that they're real people will go back look at these videos and not accept them as having been real for all five that we just watched and that's a shame it really is a shame there's such rich history you know when i look at this footage here we're talking about history and stuff the the dating the antiquated dating of this film gives me that haunted feeling that other like old videos do if you go back and you watch like really old family videos or you watch some like history piece with people recorded from like the 1940s or something it's almost spooky to watch you know do you get that feeling when you watch old film it's spooky to watch I don't mean old TV shows where the audio is garbled and it's like ah oh, this is like they just talk kind of weird I mean like family footage stuff like that from the old days pre VHS era. I've got it feels spooky. There's a, there is something spooky about it. I've got a whole tote bag full of old VHS cassettes of my family's home videos uh, that were recorded when we were growing up and even just my grandparents and great grandparents. And it's, it's very, very spooky. Another thing too, uh, <laughs> on a little side note, my mom, she came and visited and she brought old cassette tapes of my dad recording, like me and my sister talking when we were little. And so she played them on her cassette recorder and hearing me talk in full sentences when I was still like seven or six years old, it was so, so freaky, really weird to hear this other version of myself talking. I just want to be like, young Taylor don't do this. Like you have yeah. your whole life ahead of you. <laughs> oh no, we'd never meet. Yeah. Well that, or go to the spot. Bigfoot's going to be here in June, 2001, Marble Mountains. Go talk to Jim, Jim Mills. <laughs> but, Amazing. Um, yeah. No, I do find it kind of freaky. Uh, do you think Patty's still alive or do you think this Bigfoot is now a ghost foot? A ghost foot. 1967. I'm thinking if if Bob is still here living his best life, I think there's a great chance that Patty could be too. I really do. And that being said, we don't know the the life expectancy of these things to begin with. Like we mentioned earlier, we don't know their anatomy or how they work. Yeah, she'd be at least uh, probably 70 years old at this point. Yeah. Because this was 55. This is 55 years ago. Gosh. Yeah, this is a very, very long time. I was looking into some more information on it. And I mean, Patterson estimated he was about 25 feet away from the creature at his closest. That's pretty close. Mm-hmm. I don't think I'd be that comfortable being close to a Bigfoot without knowing anything more about them than what we know now. Oh, I totally I'd agree. Be scared. Now, can you imagine, um, what if they didn't find a Bigfoot today? What if they found a dog man? How different would the world be right now with footage like that? <laughs> Dogman footage is definitely one thing, because um, then I feel like a lot of people would second guess on what they believe in, and would second guess history, looking into werewolves, lycanthropy. Lycanthropy is that what you call it? Lycanthropy. Lycanthropy. lycanthropy yeah. Ha ha ha! Got it. Uh, <laughs> I, I just think that that's such a derailing thing that could be discovered in terms of just human society, because a humanoid-looking dog. It's one thing to think of a primate because we got gorillas, we got chimpanzees, orangutans, all that kind of stuff. But Bigfoot seems more in the believable realm. But within the straight up werewolves. Exactly. You talk to a skeptic about Bigfoot and they're, you know, they're skeptical. You mentioned Dogman and they totally shut you down. It's like, no, not a chance. But because something like that, uh, what, Anubis? You know, what, what are we talking about here? People cannot really wrap their mind around that. And to actually get a video 
like the Patterson Gimlin footage, but with Dogman would be incredible and it would be easily discarded. People would not buy into it whatsoever. But at the end of the day, when you look into those encounters and people are in their vehicles and they drive along the road and they see this thing standing in a ditch or these things press their faces up against the windshields of these vehicles, absolutely terrifying because I, I don't know what their, their goal is, but at least with Bigfoot and you look at the footage, it just seems like they're trying to just keep to themselves, be incredibly re- re- reclusive but with dogmen, some weird, peculiar, sinister kind of notion involved with them where they, I feel like they yeah, hide. It's mysterious. It's mysterious. They hide and at the end of the day, they sometimes like to kind of really make themselves known to people and get involved and scare the shit out of you. <laughs> but can we don't know. We don't know. But I think that kind of kind of does it. Uh, eventually, you know, we'll be going much more further in depth with this Patterson Gimlin footage and go into like the backstory behind it, their trek into the area and everything like that. So, uh, but we just want to kind of like touch upon all these videos and these sightings and just kind of analyze what we see in the footage. And yeah, like, thank you so much for providing the the links to a lot of these because some were the first time viewings for me when you sent them not too long ago, and then the majority of them were reoccurring that you showed me when we first met so it was great it was a good time oh, i'm glad i got help i'm glad that we got an episode with this much content in it about videos on a podcast <laughs> i hope our <laughs> listeners aren't too upset if they didn't follow the links and stuff like that hopefully we described enough of the footage to make this entertaining but please if you haven't check out the links check out some of this footage for yourself the stabilized patterson gimlin film you've probably seen it it's 10 seconds long but the independence day the national park like those are just amazing videos if you haven't checked them out, do it. Spread them around. Show some people. Try not to uh, make yourself come off as too crazy like we do. That's, that's <laughs> I don't know. That's the best advice I can give. There you go. I, like I have it. a Bigfoot tattooed in my arm, so I've given up. I look crazy to everybody now. You're pretty crazy. Yeah. It's a good tattoo, though. I absolutely love that. Very colorful. Very colorful. Um, well, do you have anything else you want to close out with, Ruben, before we uh, send it? No, I think that's all. Please feel free, comment on our episode. Give us some ratings. Hopefully not uh, two stars because of all the ad breaks. Taylor, I'll let you do the takeaway plugs here. Yeah, so well, like Ruben said at the very beginning of the show, you can find us on our website, cryptoclues.ca, blog access, episodes there, social media channels, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook, early ad-free episodes on our Patreon, and you can send us an email if you want to reach out to us directly, cryptoclues at gmail.com. But until next time, everyone, stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.